Again, very welcome today. And I am very honored to introduce Professor Rolf Engelberg, representing European Federation for Medical Informatics, to deliver a workshop on better health information for better health. Yeah. So please, you, yeah. you may start. Robertus, thank you for that nice introduction. Is the microphone working? You can hear me? Yeah? Good, so I have to sit here because the microphone is on the table. So I don't stand up and try to present <coughs> what I've prepared. And then, from my understanding, this is a workshop. So at the end, I have here paper and pencil, and I want to work with you. And I want to have some ideas, some information, what could be done and what is the best. And at the moment, I'm representing on the one side the European Federation for Medical Informatics, which has about 32 countries in Europe. We're looking for the Baltic states to become member, which is not that easy, because we need a society or a federation in these countries, and that at the moment, as far as I know, does not exist. On the other side, I'm representing also EuroREC and the ProREC Center, which is an organization funded and started by the U money from the European Commission. And this is the other way I recommend to take European money to bring Europe together. And of course, I know there are some projects running in this area. And let's discuss at the end possibly about that. And the third one is Sebastian Claudius Semmler, who is chair of the or uh, director of the TMF, which is an organization in Germany, it's called Technologie Methoden Platform für die Verletzte Medizinische Forschung. This means it's research oriented, network, and bringing people together <coughs> and developing methods. And he is uh, very interested in cooperation as well, of course. This is funded by public money also, only. And so at the end, we are, have three things together. E, uh, FME, which is not really funded, but UREC, which was funded and started from there and had different projects now, and TMF. And so let's discuss about healthcare and what health information could be in this direction. And to my understanding, this workshop can be a basis for further work in health information management. HIMSS stands for Health Information Management in the Baltic region. Baltic region means, of course, also Germany. And to my personal understanding, Munich is part of the Baltic region because Germany is part of the Baltic region. <laughs> we are far away from the Baltic Sea, but nevertheless, I feel like that. And we have had at the beginning my career a group in northern Germany when I started at the medical school Hannover of uh, research centers and uh, universities and the, it was the northern northern part of the society and the southern version was we had one guy from Munich in it and he felt it doesn't matter even if you are northern I will join you. Good, so this workshop will discuss to my understanding at least at least two dimensions data knowledge information for patient management this means for the patient what to do directly with the patient in diagnostic therapies but on the other side which is also important is data for the management of the healthcare processes and the healthcare institutions and this we have to see this is a trend which is coming now and this is a study which was done by a bank in germany commerzbank which uh, try to find out what are the challenges for medium and small enterprises in the next five years. And to my understanding, this is nice. Also, it was not healthcare included, of course, but also for healthcare, this might be nice to see that 60% of the engagement is in qualified personnel. And we have quite problems in Germany to qualify personnel, to find personnel, even for healthcare, for nurses, doctors, and so on. The other is to have more efficiency in the institutions. 40% that this is for them also important. And 30% of this study of the uh, says investment innovation expansion is for us an important task in the medium enterprises. Maybe in big enterprises it's the same, but I don't know. But this was a start for me. And then the other point is, what are data? And you see this is from a book which was written by Mark Musen 
and Jan van Bemmel, I think about 20 years ago, but has not changed at the end, that the clinician is working with the patient on the left hand side, oops, and there's interaction. On the other side, this generates data which are interpreted and uh, knowledge is taken for interpretation giving back to information. This means the information is generated from data and from knowledge. This is my understanding of information. And on the other side, the data are used also for insight and to extend the body of knowledge. So these are the major tasks we have to do at the moment and we should discuss in the next hour about it. We have a lot of key problems in health information science. One is the quality of information systems. I don't want to go too much into the detail of the others, but the quality is a major task. If you, and you know the sentence, rubbish in, rubbish out. If you have bad data, the results are also bad. And, and there was an initiative by IBM some years ago, uh, 30 years ago, I think. It's, they said, okay, if you have bad data, you have all say always to count with them. And so, so let's try to find. And therefore, I think the data, and this is very clear, have to be defined clearly, and they have to be understood by the users. This means not only the syntax is important, but semantic, but which was discussed yesterday a little bit. And the best way is to use standards such as EHRCOM, which is a European standard, which has now ISO standard as well since years. And I was a standard standardist, I think also some years ago, when I was in Japan, I explained to my Japanese colleagues that this is important, they should use it. And next day someone came and said, pile of papers, I said, this is the Japanese translation of it. <laughs> Be sure we are, will use it. And, and, and of course, in the European context, what most Americans don't understand, because they have only two languages at the moment, English and Spanish, uh, we have multilinguality. And this is one of the problems I see in this region here. I thought first, our oh, three Baltic states, wonderful, but now I realized the Estonians have their language, which is next to Finnish. <laughs> the Latvians have their language, which is, I don't know, next to Swedish, maybe, I have no idea. And Lith Lithuania has a language which is maybe a little bit near to Poland, I have no idea about that. I don't know all three languages, but I have learned that language is a problem. And to exchange data between your countries, you have to use a common language. English might be one, Russian might be another one, but of course, this standard EHRCOM has a possibility to define in certain languages the data. Oops. Oops. Yeah. Good, so the quality and efficiency of care is of course on data exchange to my understanding and professional expertise. We need software instruments, we need the quality of use and most of the data should be stored in the electronic health records sometimes. They are in paper version and there we have to see what is there and I don't want to go into too much detail because otherwise we lose time for a discussion afterwards. But we have to see, we have patient safety as one point, security is a coming issue and we have of course also the use of medical records and this was a study which was done in 2012. I have no idea how valid this is, but it says in Spain 95% of doctors are using electronic medical records, in Germany 93, and the last one in this row is Canada with 76. Maybe it has changed or maybe it's, I don't know the definition, what the use is of, I have just my, uh, I'm hesitating about that because I have my own experience with big companies are doing studies like that and say at the other end, this hospital using medical records and this was only one department in this hospital, so. Good. Now, the mostly topic now, most used topic is big data. And big data is, uh, should be discussed this morning in the opening lecture. <laughs> so it is not, but okay. But to my understanding, I like this to have the eight Vs, the eight dimensions. Volume is clear, amount of data. Velocity, how changes are done. The variety from which sources. And we will discuss later also from uh, technical resources like lab medicine, like imaging, and so on and the reliability of imprecise data, 
the value for citizens, the visualization, how to present it, is very, really important. Otherwise, you are lost in data. I, we know that medical doctors can handle at the same time only six to seven data from a patient. So they need some help in that. And visualization isn't help. The variability and volatility, how long is data valid, this is also not so clear. And we will come, I think, hopefully to that at the end. So the challenges of big data were a topic of a conference we did three years ago in Prague. There is a journal which is free of charge. You can get it online and get the papers out of the journal on big data. And last year we had a seminar in combination with this conference in Kaunas at the university and Pirko Nikanen, who was chair of the program committee for this conference, was there and talked about her experiences and her view on that. So this is a good way also to bring people here. She came from Finland just for this seminar. She had no time to stay for the conference, but okay. So we could continue in this way next year as well. The problems we have to solve are quality of data, and as it was discussed yesterday already, handling of free text, natural, natural language processing is a problem, coding, completeness of the data, how do you realize data are complete, and so on, and coding rules, proper use, edu and the educational part is, I'll uh, come back to that later. So, we have done some work in European projects, like the Eurorec project, we have defined quality criteria for data, and these criteria were in narrative way. This means free text, let's add, taken from studies, taken from handbooks, whatever. And the idea was to have this information about the quality of the information systems, quality of data, for discussion with the users, the medical doctors, because they don't speak informatics, they have their own language, and so we developed these criteria, which were at the end, I think, thousand, more than 1,000 we had developed, and we took 50 out of that for a quality, quality seal. And we have, of course, the data quality uh, done by the health information managers. In former times, they were called medical record clerks, and they are gathering the information, they are caring for information, and we have to discuss about that. So we have companies who are going into that direction very clear. You know, I think, SAS as a company for statistics. It's used in the medical field very often, beside SPSS. And they have an area which is called big data analytics. And they, using, of course, big data for uncover hidden patterns, unknown correlations, and other useful information which is not to be seen automatically. So you need tools for that and we have to see what could be done. We have then on the other side some organizations who do some work. The IFEMA is the International Federation for uh, Health Information Management and part of IFEMA is the AHIMA, the American Health Information Management Association. They are doing a lot of work. They have tools, they have tutorials, and they are organizing conferences, and one will be in December in Las Vegas about data-driven healthcare. And the one fact is that this is important, the other is see the line. AHIMA is an association which has 103,000 members. This is a typical American way, big. <laughs> we are the greatest, <laughs> but okay, in this case, it's true, AHIMA is in this area, the greatest organization. They are very helpful. They are a member of the European Federation for Medical Informatics. And whenever we need some assistance in that, they, as the Americans are, they like to come, they like to help. And what they are doing in this conference is identifying advanced skills to lead the workforce and discuss key points in the continually changing reimbursement world. Good. The, him, health information management, is more than medical records. And this is, I think, also important. It has these areas of system analysis, information system development, management, IT management, and leadership, education, and training. And of course, in this case, we have to see all these topics which are important. And we will find this list again in other areas. We have this as layers, classical ones, documentation, of course, but also the others I mentioned before as layers, 
in this. Then we have the strategies to overcome our problems. We have the user adapted systems by these guys, the integrate systems, offline functions also, in online functions. They have service oriented modules, quality assurance and capacity building, which is education and training. And we might discuss about this at the end also. An example for him education is the HIM program of the University of Applied Sciences and Arts of Hanover in Germany. I'm from Hanover, therefore I know the guys very well who are working there. They have more than 30 years experiences in health information management education. It was called at the beginning different. Of course, they had a diploma of biomedical documentation first. This is here. This was the first part. Then they moved for 2004 to, to medical documentation in 2005 to 2009. And, in and then there came, of course, Bologna. And so they developed a bachelor in medical information management since 2010. And since 2015, they have a master in health information management. And this is for Germany the classical way at the moment that schools uh, not real universities are more moving in the universe on the university level and they of course are there, there to bring people together to educate people and at the end they are able to have a bachelor a master in that and we also have the situation in Germany maybe it's new to you we have of course the uh, normally classical way of workers in the field who get a master degree, which is not master, but it's a master, master degree. You need a certification to establish a company in your region. They are for different areas. And now it has changed that these master, which are normal people on normal schools, not gymnasiums, they are able to have university studies. And I know that the discussion yesterday that there are courses together with this master degree or bachelor degree and master school which is a classical practical word and this is this means the words are coming together and this is uh, what we see we have and you can get these slides afterwards I don't want to go into detail they have the uh, him people thinking about their challenges for the next years and you see uh, <coughs> what I've highlighted is Clinicians need tools and information to anticipate the outcomes and cost consequences of clinical decisions at the point of care. And that they mostly don't have at the point of care, that's information. And of course, and the other part is clinical and business process leaders must own the EHR and other technologies in order to them to be successful. I think these both lines are for me very important. And uh, so let's see, and Linda Kloss has written this in a conference and presented this, as far as I know, in Montreal in a conference, and good. But we have, and this is a message to you and also to the conference organizers, it's nice to have a very scientific conference. I like it and it's necessary to do so, but we have also the people who are working with our tools at the end and we have to make that they are able to use the tools successfully and so we move, have to move them from health information manager in paper form to e-health information managers and they have to in this way to become a part of a competent future workforce and this is our task as well so we have as university we have to do research on the first position we have to educate students the scientific community, but we also have to think about the users at the end, and this could be a topic we can discuss afterwards. So, and then of course we have the idea of innovative technologies, and I've seen that the opening was done by the uh, vice rector of KTU, and he said he is responsible for innovation. And I was happy about that because I think innovation is very important for us. And of course I found this here, research, innovation at a glance, have a look into it. And you will find lots of things which are interesting. And if you go more into detail, you'll find things which you never expected. For instance, there is, as we discussed, this EIT Health Hub. And this is uh, part of this innovation 
activities, but one of the centers for that is also Munich. So I will see what's going on in this, what I've learned from this conference today, this morning. So we have to see how the new innovations could be used, and I will come to some later, and for the health information management profession. So this has to be included into our educational support for existing professionals, not only for new ones. And so we have to ha use applied and interactive ways of learning need to be developed. I will have an example for that as well. And uh, the health information management educators must be able to access advanced education focused. <coughs> so remind up to date. And we have in Europe EHIM conferences and other opportunities to do so. And let's try to use it and uh, maybe this conference could work in that direction. And I like this photo very much because it's talking about capacity building, how can what someone else climb the ladder and uh, in this Lego bricks to become a better uh, manager, a better thing. And, and we have the capacity building defined. This is more than education. It's a long-term continuing process of development. And we have to see that this will hopefully enable human beings, especially health professionals, to work with actual tools. And this is a problem here. Uh, I'm very sure our children and grandchildren will be more able than we are. Because when I see what, if I have a problem with my smartphone, I ask my granddaughter, and she explains me how it works really. And she is now 14 years old and much more experienced in this area than me. Okay, good. The level, I will skip this because, oops, oh, yeah, I'm good in time. We have some areas from UK, for instance, they have careers in health informatics, which include this. They have a toolbox and a schedule here from the framework levels, the knowledge management, information management, and so on. I, and you can see this, and for each you have a description what the position should be, could be in this, but this is, as far as I'm not important, the FEMA is the International Health Information Management Association, uh, which has a European branch, and they have a learning center, which is done by uh, Lorraine Nicholson from UK, and you can get their education modules and read them, use them for your purposes. And the modules you see here are very deep, and I don't want also to, not to go into detail here because I think it's nice to have, nice to look into it, to use it. I have no idea how really we'll use it at the end, and how far it could be integrated in courses and so on. We'll come to another final points of examples. This is very new at the moment. The does anyone know UMIT? You know it. Good, okay. This is the University for Medical Informatics and Technologies in Hall in Tirol, which is a private university. And the first rector was a good friend of mine, Reinhold Haux, and they are doing some work in the area of medical informatics, but also in uh, other uh, social sciences and so on. And they have in program which is called Health Information Management mm -hmm. and they are teaching it as online course using collaborative instructional design. I have no idea what that is really, but this is what they say. And this is their task to learn how it could be used, this design this tool, but and they also have developed a first course for health information management, but the target employees are only Siemens health engineers. This is a wonderful name. This is a new branch in Siemens, which is, uh, Siemens may be known by you by high ranking equipment, like MRTs and whatever. And this branch is now is sitting in Erlangen in Germany. It's called Helsinias. This is not an engineer, it's a Helsinia. And so uh, this uh, group has known this online course developed by UMIT and it's, check, it's done via internet and the teachers themselves will get specific training and guidelines to design their online courses at the end so they have many teachers and you can get more information about that, about that when you look to humid in austria.at austria and him 
And this is a way which could be done. I have a complete version here in German for, no, it's, it's in English for the German conference. I can give it to you and I know the woman who is behind that, this Elske Amenwert, who is doing some work in that and she offered me the, her presentation. So this is a way that you can, in countries which are uh, mostly broader and you have no don't have access possibilities for people to come to a point and discuss things to be educated there to you online use online courses the other is that AMIA the American Medical Medics Association has courses 10 by 10 this was the idea at the beginning 10,000 people educated in this field until 2010 so this was 10 by 10 but now it's 2018, but the courses are still running. They have training courses, healthcare professionals, and to serve, for instance, as informatics leaders. This is one of the ideas to have only in these courses the leading person so they can distribute the information knowledge later. Good. And this was the sentence which is down here, was written by Don Detmer. He was past EMEA president in the US and he was said at the same time a uh, professor in Cambridge in the UK. So, and we know each other very well. So he says, okay, every hospital, clinic, healthcare organization will need professionals versed in informatics to assist with implementation, use and success of health IT system. That's one of the messages of this. And then I like this. That's, no direct relationship, but the iPhone, i tablet, and whatever iPad is in all names. So we have iHealth as well in US. It's i information, individual, and informatics, intelligence, innovation, and improved healthcare. This is, uh, I think, a nice uh, way to explain it. We have on the other side in Germany, and this might be also something for countries in the Baltic region, other regions, a partnership approach. This is the Telemed Alliance. This started in 2012 in Ingolstadt in Bavaria by a colleague, Siegfried. He did, uh, was is practicing physician and said we should do something more for our physicians. And so he asked the health ministry in Bavaria for some money and it was financed and he was look this alliance is acting with demonstration rooms in Ingolstadt where you can see new equipment, innovative functions, innovative processes. On the other side our they have a conference and this is also for me un not understandable how this is working. They have had now it's just in Bavaria a one-day conference, the last one was in Munich, and they have more than 800 participants for a one-day conference. Okay, Germany is a big country, Je Bavaria has about 13 million inhabitants, which is a little bit more than Lithuania, but uh, the success was that there were 800 people coming together, discussing and uh, learning what's going on, and this is dealing with enhanced patient care, with technical and infrastructural key questions, standardization, regulation, and of course, economic, ecological, and social challenges. So this was a partnership approach. We have partners from the medical technology, from university clinics, from hospitals, from universities, from the GPs, and IT people. So you see, we have annual conferences, now spring and winter, background conferences, register of national and international projects, they have an academy started together with uh, TÜV, it's strange to me how that works, but we wrote the first book on medical informatics. I wrote the introductional paper on that and the first part and gave, we gave it to our health minister in Bavaria and she said, yes, I will read it, that's very important for me. I have no idea if she read it in the meantime, but uh, this was a course on telemedicine on paper and then now they have 12 units for learning in telemedicine health, so this is part of the uh, educational person and we have of course in some areas health information communication projects like in the scientific organizations like the German Society for Medical Informatics, FMI, I mentioned already, Eurorec, Euromice was an exercise 
we developed an institution in Prague for medical informatics, statistical epidemiology. So we had Kurek, Darb, called Epsos. Epsos was a large project and had its problems, 25 countries, mostly all Baltic countries included in that. But at the end, okay, it was nice. We had this communication infrastructure project, which is organized by my department. I don't want to go into detail here because and we have out of this a nationwide telematics infrastructure, which should have worked. This was defined in 2003 in a law, was well, should be ready in 2006. And now we are really in the way that we are 15 years later <laughs> <laughs> testing it at the moment. So this is a problem we have in infrastructures. And uh, even if internet is available, security is a major problem in that. And of course, the users, like medical doctors, are a specific kind of users. Then another innovation part at the moment, to my understanding, is blockchains and the opportunities for healthcare. Blockchains, I never knew about this really, uh, except for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a use of blockchains where you have uh, not one bank, but spread all over the world, and you cannot change it automatically. You have to do it, but you cannot rub out because it's so many computers. And this is uh, blockchain technology which has the potential, potential for transform healthcare, placing the patient at the center of healthcare ecosystem. This is the idea. And you can see, no, cannot see because it's, uh, it's on this screen, different uh, characters. It's, this was done by Deloitte and Tush, which is one of the leading uh, companies of device. And they uh, said this is used to make electronic medical records more efficient and more intermediated and secure. Security is one of the points of blockchains as far as I understand. Then, of course, there's a blockchain revolution. Sorry, for this, on my computer is working properly. So this is uh, a problem. This is done by IBM. And you can give you these slides at the end. And IBM is also working on this fields, learn about the blockchain revolution. This might be that we will talk next year about an innovation technology like that and invite big companies for it. I have no idea if this is possible, but it's a technology which is important, but it does not mean that the content is rubbish like before. The content should be clear at the same time. We should have this, what I mentioned before, the standards in that. But this is just to bring the different pieces together. And one of the sentences of this IBM presentation and words was, we are discussing about big data on the one side. IBM discussing on low data. This means longitudinal data. This means the whole life of the patient in a chain. And this is my view at the moment of blockchain. And it has, of course, commercial aspects at the moment. Uh, the idea is keeping patients at the center. And this IBM uh, study surveyed 200 healthcare executives. And 16% expect to have commercial blockchain solution at scale at 2017. This was done last year, uh, two years ago. So I've not, not found any information what really happened. But this is a technology which seems to be mature in the moment, and we should see what the possibilities are. And this might be a good way to bring research, technical research, methodological research, and apl application on healthcare together. And this might be a good way for this conference as well, because it's, to my understanding, a conference which is really on a high level, methodological part, and we could discuss about having this together we have. And now I'm coming to the end. Oops. Yeah. Oops. OK. Done a study with this TMF and for our uh, health minister, the Bavarian Health Data Center. We defined the goals. It was a study which was done, and I was responsible for the European part on that. And our minister said, each of us creates digital marks in everyday life. For instance, at GP, in the hospital, uh, data generated and stored. And I want to know how this data could be used for prevention, information of the citizen. For this, we have started a feasibility study for Bavarian Health Data Center. And this study 
as far as I know, is available. This was done in 2016. The goal of this feasibility study was description and analysis of deficits using data for healthcare policy and healthcare research. The possibility to eliminate these deficits and the basis should be state of art of in public access to data, its communication and use. This was the concept of the Bavarian Health Data Center. In the meantime, uh, things have changed a little bit because we have this hupsa. I don't know what happens with that. So this, okay. Uh, we have this Medical, medical Initiative, MMI. This is an initiative by the, health, by the Minister for uh, Research and Education in Germany, the Federal Minister. And in this, we discussing about making available patient-oriented medical data from clinics, patient data use for knowledge extension, data exchange, and use across <coughs> borders. This is important because we have, of course, borders in Germany as well. We have 16 states, and so they have their own life and their own ideas. And this is the schema a little bit, what's going on. We have the doctor and patient in the middle. On the left-hand side, we have the patient treatment. On the right side, we have the research. And so the idea of this initiative is to bring research and take care together. And at the end, of course, the, we started in 2016 and 2025, sorry, this was wrong in my slide here, oops, just realized it, this should read 25, <laughs> in three phases, and this is funded by the federal government by 150 million euros, so this is, I think, a, a bigger part, and it is now, has the definition behind the first two years, it starts now in 2018, which creating the networking phase, you'll see on the right hand side, is just for information, the different locations. We have consortia which have own projects like DI Future, HiMed, Miracum, Smith. I know some of those colleagues very well. And we have the coordination. Coordination is by uh, Zemla from TMF. And we have in this year the expectation that we have three new university locations by the 1st of November. And in total, there will be at that time 33 university locations which are linked together, the data, the medical data. And this is done in 27 so-called DIZ, which is a data integration center. So this is the future of what we are doing at the moment in Germany. And uh, I think this could be also a task to think about how this could be done in the Baltic region here, in the three countries, I know that there is some communication, but of course com also some competition. Let's see what that is. There is an architecture available we can discuss about. This is presented in Munich in a conference in the 28th to 30th of November. And uh, this is also funny for me that because slides to be presented in this conference are already available on the website. It's called DR Future, for instance, for one of the project, the Digital Health Summit is called this conference, and this is also new that you can read the slides before. So, this was my presentation so far, and I think we then a little bit continue on that. I'm yeah? afraid that well, we have a very nice audience, and we should involve them. Yes, of course. Yeah, I, I, I want to show that this is a broad field and we should discuss, to my understanding, the two topics and uh, discuss what could be done, what should be done in the future with that and how could we use this conference in the future for it and how could we establish bilateral uh, contacts and whatever that. Okay, so will you? Uh, 20 minutes left. Yeah. So maybe, maybe there are some, some questions? Some questions or some yes. ideas? I yeah. Have, I have a question. Of course. Two questions. It was not clear for me what are the problems that you were discussing here. Uh, was it a problem of information system development for uh, healthcare? Yeah. Or it was the problem with us usage of technology? Uh, if it is a problem of information system development, uh -huh. we know that we have a lot of information systems for different areas, and healthcare, or yes, one of them, 
So, in spite of the fact which area we develop the system, mm -hmm. yeah, it is about data. Yeah. So the most important, it could be police, it could be healthcare. The most important thing is how you do analysis of data. Which data you put? We, it is it, because we have the problem of redundant data, less data, too much data. So if you have no good methods for analysis of data and how it is turned to information, we cannot talk about the technology. So it, because the analysis and design is the most important thing, what we implement, we have set, uh, in spite of the fact which uh, area we take. Mm -hmm. so my question is, how you look at that point, you talk about very on the very high level of abstraction, but how you do the analysis of data that belongs to, that will be used by patients or the systems will uh, developed for patients or doctors. Mm -hmm. Or it is important how they use the technology because they have no knowledge how to use. But I think it's that your research is not about that, but about the first part. Yeah. What we developed for them who will be using these systems, yeah. that is the most important and we have problems. Yeah. Yeah, the answer is not that easy. No. <laughs> because on the one side, of course, I know first you have to have reliable data and I've learned in my life to working together with epidemiologists who are measuring the blood pressure for a cardiology oriented study and they said from our point of view the first measurement we throw away the second at the same patient some minutes later is more reliable but who knows what is really the quality of the data this is one part to solve it, so yeah. it's a uh, contact or contest. You have to go from that point. If you really know the problem, you know, yeah. and you do, you know, you do a good analysis, but the problem is that we are not provided with good methods to do analysis, or there are maybe some methods. So that is the problem. If you have a good method, you choose the good method to do analysis, the yeah, but in most cases, okay, this is one way to do it, yes, to generate knowledge out of data. That's what you have done to have a method, for instance, like uh, using data files for reasoning. But, uh, so, my problem is I don't understand totally what you mean. It's clear, very clear if you put data in, and then you have a doctor who's reading the data, and he knows from which doctor is coming, he trusts on that, or if he says no, from this doctor I don't trust, I generate my own data again. This is one of the problems I see, analyzing of data on the way that you know from whom this data are coming. On the other side, of course, automatic analysis of images, this might be a topic which is important for us as well, because some there is a lot of information given, and. Uh, this is one part, but the tools for analysis are sometimes there. I know that, for instance, for not the patient orientation, but the process and institutional orientation is done by Google, for instance, at the moment. Google is doing a lot of work to take data for analysis of the institutions. And what they really do, they don't tell us. but. I think there are methods, and I have no idea how this could be done, but we have lots of institutions who are dealing with this type of analysis, statistics, presentation of data. Maybe this is helps you, I don't know. But the normal way is a doctor has data, shares it with another doctor, and then they try to understand what's going on there. And this is what I see, what is, this is okay. Yeah, other comments to that? Uh, could I supplement a little bit uh, the, well, you mentioned uh, about the data analysis. Mm -hmm. 
to be prepared for, uh, for uh, well, in, in the process of the information system design. Uh, well, uh, I would like to add that, well, and it was also mentioned that usually information system is intended to automate some already existing processes or the processes should be changed. So the process analysis is also important. Mm -hmm. And data and processes goes together, of course. Uh, well, and, uh, well uh, just I would like to add that well, we had uh, quite a big boom after third attempt in Lithuania and eHealth. Mm -hmm. Also, we have national system. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there were a lot of, uh, well, almost all the hospitals now are covered by eHealth systems. Well, at different extent, definitely. Well, but what happened, and well, well, it's in a particular case uh, that uh, well, the information, those information systems, uh, well, took the processes, analyzed ordinary processes, and now finally happens that well, some processes were forgotten completely, and well, it's a pity because uh, if we take, if we, if we face the e-health standards. Well, there is an initiative of integrating the healthcare enterprise, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, covered those forgotten processes. Well, so, uh, well, the particular case is uh, patient information reconciliation in the laboratory workflow. Yeah, but the problem was that so, the analysis so was not done enough good. I, I mean, I mean that well, that, that that's that's well. Actually, I am uh, admiring that well, there are quite uh, many initiatives for education, and well, it's a pity that uh, only recently in the KTU we have the well e-health study program. Mm -hmm. Well, so we we will have only first uh, bachelor's graduating this teaching year. Well, uh, so so. Maybe, well, that was the reason that <coughs> some processes were forgotten, but they are covered already. So just, well, we need to look around and use that uh, knowledge. It's not a miracle, but well, sim simply, well, well, the main workflow was covered, but well, some additional we are left aside. Mm -hmm. Now, but coming back to your view, what I understand is that and what we are doing is preparing the data, looking that the data have good quality. They have good quality mostly if they are used. If they are not used, you don't find errors in it mostly. And then you have uh, some colleagues of operations research statistics who are doing the analysis at the end. And then they have to ask, you have to ask, for which purpose are they doing the analysis? One, what we have done in Germany was the, uh, for knowledge bases, creating knowledge out of data and then trying to use this knowledge for treating patients. This is a way, okay, which could be done, but for others, I don't know at the moment who is in charge of that. Uh, the medical doctors are not, the nurses are not, and we are, as informaticians, try to pri provide the best data, best information. But, and of course, we are still operating or cooperating with people from the analysis department. We have to see uh, f possibly that we take the industry. What they are doing for normal processes, normal companies, why should they do the same methods for healthcare? But I don't know at the moment the answer for that, but this could be a possibility to look for other regions or other areas. What are they doing? Should we do the same for medicine? Yeah. As I said, different, uh, different scenarios. So, but the principles are the same: data and processes, integration. That's it. The so principles may be the same. The implementation may be different. We had a project years ago: uh, how to use the mouse and other things for in information system in healthcare. And the doctors, this said very clear: I don't need that stuff. When I have a patient in front. I have a very specific situation and I cannot use a mouse and look through the screen and then. So I'm used 
to write by ten fingers, blind, and then I can look to the patient, right, and so the connection to the patient is there. So it's not that easy, because you have always people in the great in the in this center, yeah. Yeah, how they use it's another problem. Uh, you know how they like to use face-to-face -face or technology. Yeah. But we are talking now about the first level analysis of data, what they will work with, yeah, yeah. what they you know need oh, yeah. to. And uh, it's not maybe the doctor who doesn't know. It's a scenario that should be handled before yeah. that all the doctors can use and institutions. Right. Okay. So it should be, I think, <laughs> very early to solve yeah, these right. problems. Okay, about that, uh, the analysis of the data uh, will never stop to have a revolution there, okay? And uh, if you have more and more data, more and more uh, analysis and processes, you are going to find out in order to solve uh, new problems. Uh, so always the first level is uh, how you are going to get the data, and I uh, totally agree with you that the quality of the data is the uh, first thing that uh, you must consider before starting any analysis, okay? Uh, the, this field is uh, much more complicated than the other fields, like the industry and etc. Because here you have to do with humans, mm -hmm. uh, you have to do the information about uh, their lives. Uh, you have uh, plenty of different actors because you have doctors, you have hospitals, uh, you have even doctors and hospitals in different countries and etc. That all of this must exchange. Uh, very uh, significant and critical information about the patients. Mm -hmm. So it is not easy at all. Also, you have uh, local laws that you have to take under consideration, and all of these matters. It's very complicated. Uh, and uh, this is the reason that all these years uh, we saw uh, a lot of uh, uh, efforts, either creation of clusters or uh, conferences and all of this, try to um, at least start making a base for exchange uh, the data. Mm -hmm. um, definitely in the coming years we are going to see uh, a lot of progress on that. Uh, all the countries that are talking about uh, an electronic card for each uh, citizen mm -hmm. with all the information of their health uh, in it and all of these matters. So if uh, we finally solve the issues at this first step to get the data, to be sure about the security and the quality of the data, then we are going to start working more on the processing of the data. Yeah. Now this is right and we have of course with these new tools like smartphones and applications, it's all called apps, lots of data the gathering tools which are patient oriented, the patient can have it on his own smartphone, can distribute it, give it to the doctor, and there we have of course security problems, but we have more and more data and this is sometimes I think like a data pollution. And we have to see what is the value of that and how can we analyze what is important, what is not important, yeah. And so that direction you're totally right and you also and sometimes data does not help. I remember very well a situation in your country, in Greece, where I was invited by the EU and was sitting next to your health minister and they started to implement information systems in hospitals. And the idea was to have in all 15 hospitals which are in this framework, have it at, at once, and starting from top, immediately. And then they did analysis and I remember very well this was in the health ministry with a pile of paper like that, with analysis data. Huh? But nobody was able to read this at the end and uh, what the quality I don't know. And the was, idea was there and they stopped this action immediately and they started some years later, hospital by hospital, now as far as I know, this is running in Greece. Yeah. Yeah. So, but this is situation we have now in other areas as well. We have tools, we have technologies, we have to see what we can do with it. And of course, you are right, we have to see for what purpose are we using this data. How can we analysis, do an analysis of that and who has the right 
tools for that. And as I mentioned before, the statistics institutes like SAS are able to do so. Of course, Google has tools for that, I'm very sure, but they don't tell us about it, really, and others may be the same. And we have then this data, and otherwise we have an specific data problems, because if you have images, and this is your area, you have to analyze the images itself. And sometimes it might much better for mammography or whatever to find tumors by a computer and by a system than by a human being. On the other side, the experience of a human being is also helpful. This combination is one of the problems we have as well. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning. <laughs> yeah, no, this is. I, I, I would like to say perhaps to, to mention that uh, all the imaging data, medical imaging uh, data, and perhaps all the other medical data. It has a very interesting feature that uh, uh, well, it degrades during the time. Mm -hmm. Well, not by it degrades not by itself, but uh, the new uh, medical equipment provides uh, the data of much better quality. So, uh, if if we will try to analyze analyze uh, uh, images produced 10 years ago, so we, we might find that they are not suitable for analysis at all. Uh, and I, I am afraid that <coughs> the other medical, kind of medical data could, could uh, go this way as well. Mm -hmm. And new technology, as far as I read, now is sonography is important, but to have colorful screens is more important because you can identify region of interest and whatever they are. And so it's easy to be read by medical doctors if there are some colors in and they have just to concentrate on the green ones or the red ones or whatever. I have no idea about it. I'm talking like the blind about colors at the moment. But I can imagine that the type of t presentation of data helps in the analysis of single data. Yeah? Good. Yeah, how should we continue with this conference next year? I, I think we started and had the idea to bring other areas of the Baltic countries in here. This is still my wish as European. I'm European, of course, from origin German, born in Poland. So I'm really European in this direction. And how can we do this? This is one part. And this could be done, of course, mostly by interesting presentations, interesting announcements, and personal contacts as far as I can see. And of course, success stories. We might need some success stories for imaging, for sonography, for uh, lab medicine, whatever. For me, lab medicine was a topic which had our MedVis uh, project framework called Medical Knowledge Basis, where our guy or colleague from Trendenburg <laughs> uh, arrived rule-based tools for analysis of lab data. This was important because these rules could be understood by medical doctors as well. They knew what the rules are behind, so they can understand what the system mostly should do or is able to do, but the results were somewhere really astonishing. And we have the same with other technologies like neural networks. Who has experiences in neural networks? No? Uh. <laughs> okay, this is also a tool for the analysis of data. <coughs> <coughs> and we, I have <coughs> a nice story of that. We had did a small neural network and in the area of myocardial infarction. So we tried to find out that, well, this is just last sentence. <coughs> How could we predict what happens to a patient? Is he survived by myocardial infarction or not? So we trained our network. This was excellent. It was very, very clear at the end. And then we thought, how could this net, did this network work? So we analyzed or make an analysis of a tool. And we found that this result was based on the diagnosis. And we had three diagnoses for each patient. And the system could 
make a difference between the diagnosis done by a medical doctor in hospital and in private practice. It was very clear that people who did this diagnosis in private practice were dying. And the, and the patients who were in the hospital were mostly alive. And so they could identify which doctor did the diagnosis, and from this, the conclusion was which patient did survive and which not. So we have to be very careful with analysis of our tools ourselves and use it and to apply and say, oh, doctors, this is a good tool, please use it. Okay, so if there are still questions, oops, remarks, thank you for your attention, write to me, and I'm happy if I get the feedback afterwards. And, oops, yeah, just in time. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for your workshop and for continuous support of our conference. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, and now, uh, a short information. Uh, after the lunch, do not leave, because we will have a ceremony to award best papers. We have very general prizes for these papers. Uh, and uh, now, we will continue with our regular sessions without any further delay. Thank you. Well, yeah.